on this episode of Canine Corner, it's all about Halloween. We'll be sharing ways to celebrate the spooky holiday with your canine companion, and we'll be learning Halloween safety tips. All this coming up right now on Canine Corner. I'm Rhiannon Shurtanich, your host for Canine Corner, the show that your dog will give two paws up. We have a ghoulishly great show for you today. My co-host Popeye the Pumpkin Shurtanich will be joining me to share some ways to celebrate Halloween with your canine companion. And Jean Brusovich from Tranquil Pet will be giving us some Halloween safety tips for dogs as well as some costume safety tips. And we feature a lot of adorable dogs on the show, but rescue groups do a lot behind the scenes to get those animals adopted. So we're gonna sit down with Kenmar Rescue and learn about all the work they do to get dogs into forever homes. So Kenmar Rescue was founded in 2007, and to date we have saved almost a thousand lives. We rescue from the local city and county shelters in Los Angeles. We are looking for dogs that are happy, healthy, would make great family additions. And our sweet spot is usually the range of between 10 to 20 pounds. Our uh, small dogs are ranging from puppy like this one, all the way to maybe four or five years old. And we are um, a 501c3 charity, and all the donations go directly to welfare and medical for these kids. The underpinnings to Kenmar Rescue are that there are so many amazing and deserving animals that go unseen by the public because of maybe uh, pre-foreseen um, thoughts at going in and not knowing the background of a dog or not knowing anything about the breed blend. Um, so Kenmar Rescue's underpinnings were founded on getting the awareness out there about these animals, saving and rescuing as many as we could by either cross promotion or by actually getting out there in the media and um, letting people know that these dogs are in the shelters, at their local shelters. And I would say another underpinning was just because we absolutely adore dogs and we think they add a lot of good things to humanity and to companionship. And there are a lot of people who have let us know, thankfully, that their lives have been changed for the good after adopting a dog and putting them in their lives. So those are all good things that we want to promote. And Kenmar Rescue has been around since 2007. And I'd like to think that, you know, with our volunteer work, we have improved the lives of many people. So for Kenmar Rescue, a lot of behind the scenes things happen before we even decide on what dog we're going to pursue for rescue. Um, there's a lot of online resources that are specific to whatever shelters there are out there, city, county, and everything in between. Uh, we, as an adoption partner that's been approved by the city and by the county, get emails every day, but yeah, on dogs that are available. And so my first step is to tap into that email and see if there's a dog that maybe one of our families has been looking for. So behaviorally, we're looking for happy, healthy, uh, well-adjusted dogs. Do we get them all the time? No. Do we work on them? Yes. But by and large, our overarching goal is to get the good dogs out of harm's way and into great families. And the next step is once we've identified, you know, one or two dogs, I'll make a, full, a few phone calls to the shelters themselves. Tell me a little bit about this dog. Was it an owner surrender? If it was, why? Is it a simple housebreaking uh, or some kind of a skill that the dog needs to be trained on? Um, or is it because the dog was very vocal? Which also will tell me a little bit more about what the right fit might be for that dog. If the dog is too vocal, it might not be a good fit for a home with shared walls like a condominium or an apartment. Um, it might be a good fit for someone who is very active, has a high athletic level, and that dog would be happy and content running and jogging with that person and getting all of that extra energy out. Once we've rescued a dog and gone through all of that, our protocol is we take them immediately to our private vet. And our vet is able to do a little bit more intensive nose to tail evaluation. 
Sometimes if the dog needs dentistry because he's got you know, dental tartar buildup, we'll raise the money and get that taken care of. Or if there's a ward that needs to be removed, things of that nature. Um, then the dog gets to go to a spa day at our groomer and I have another set of hands, eyes and ears telling me, you know, is this dog paw sensitive to nail trim? Has the dog potentially never been in a salon whereby he's scared or she's scared of the clippers, the blow dryer? So we get to have more of the story as we go. Once we've had the dog in our home for a few days in foster care, then I can kind of tell people, gets along with other dogs, gets along with big dogs, small dogs, you know, doesn't like lizards, goes on squirrel patrol, you know, things about the dog's personality that gives you a better well-rounded idea. Is this dog going to be the right fit for me? Um, and then we take uh, as many pictures as we can. Some of these kids can be a little bit squirmy. And uh, we put them on profiles like Adopt-A-Pet, our website, KenmarRescue.org, or Adop um, Pet Finder also. And, uh, and then we cross our fingers and hope for the best and hope that people see how adorable they are as much as we do. And uh, then they go onto uh, our website to fill out an adoption application, which takes about five minutes. And once we get the uh, adoption, what we, we call it an, an adoption questionnaire, um, we give them a call and talk to them a little bit more and answer their questions. And then if it's right, then we schedule a meet and greet to see if they're compatible, if there's a love connection. And if there is, then that dog has a new home. So when we're rescuing dogs, um, sometimes we'll take a look at a dog that might have been overlooked by the public. Uh, if the dog just needs a simple bath and he's full of oil or matted mess, um, a simple grooming might make that dog look so adorable. And that will give them a, a separate, uh, a different chance, an additional chance to getting into a great home. Um, also too, if the dog, for example, might not do well in a shelter condition, maybe they're scared, um, they're not showing very well, they're not coming up to the front of the gate to greet people. Um, a couple of days in foster care with a nice home and the ability to get de decompressed will change that dog's personality tenfold. And that is something that we try to get the public to see when they're adopting from us. Sometimes we never know how long it's going to take. It could take a couple of weeks. It could take a year. Um, but by and large, they have homes with us until they are adopted. And because we are, not, are never in a hurry to get them adopted, we just want it to be the right fit. And by the right fit, we mean that in the long run, the dog will be able to make that family happy and the family also will be able to take care of the dog's needs, medical needs in the long run if that comes to it, um, and just overall including that dog as a member of the family. People are always asking us what is it that my donation goes towards. Your donation can go towards an $8 vaccine. It can make the difference between whether or not we're able to rescue a dog that might need a limb amputation, which could be a few hundred dollars. It might go towards just basic food, treats, kibble, a new pet bed. You know, it always is used for the orphans and people can help in a, a number of ways. Um, we have created our Guardian Angel pro program and in that um, program, people can donate on a monthly basis, they can donate one time, they can raise money through you know, doing bake sales or fundraising drives. Uh, we get students who want to have some kind of a project that's animal welfare related. And then once they raise that money, they can donate it through our Guardian Angel program. And that money will go towards the purchase of toys, treats, um, and you know, just the overall care and adoption process for these kids. Um, people can also help by just being advocates of you know animals that are in the shelter or are in need of adoption through rescue. Um, maybe they can't afford to donate, but if they can advocate on behalf of these kids um, or foster if they want to be part of a foster program, um, and also just you know spread the word even if it's a simple click on Facebook and sharing to their friends, that simple click can get that dog's awareness to that person who might be looking and it doesn't cost anything. So there are a lot of things, especially now through social media, people who share our profiles with our kids, 
don't realize how much they are helping them. If you are interested in adopting one of Kenmar Rescue's dogs, please visit KenmarRescue.org. My co-host Popeye Chertanich is here now to help me share some ways that you can celebrate the spooky season with your pup. Welcome to Popeye's Pumpkin Patch. If you're worried about coming up with festively frightful ways to celebrate Halloween with your canine companion, don't fret because these pumpkins have you covered. Let's start with setting the stage for the spooky season. You can have your dog hang out with you while you're decking the halls for Halloween. You can also have some dog friendly Halloween decorations. One idea is to get a cauldron or a pumpkin bowl or even a festive Halloween dog bowl like I have here and fill it with some dog treats for your pup. I have regular old dog bones, but you can also get some festive Halloween treats at your local pet store. Another idea is to dress up with your dog for Halloween. You're of course only going to want to do this if your dog likes costumes and is comfortable in costumes like somebody is. And finally, although your dog can't help you carve a pumpkin, your dog can be your inspiration and you can carve a pumpkin to look just like your dog. Pretty cute, huh? If you and your pup are social butterflies or social bats keeping in theme with the season, then we have a couple ideas for you. Talk to your neighbors and see if they would be interested in having some dog trick-or-treating going on on Halloween night, and if they would be willing to give out some dog treats to the four-legged trick-or-treaters. You can get these adorable pre-packaged treats at your local pet store. I have some pumpkin spice latte ones and some little cookies in the shape of Halloween things, bats and ghosts and all that ghoulish stuff. You can even wrap some up on your own if you want to make a little bit more crafty and make them a little bit more personal. Another idea is to take your dog to a dog friendly pumpkin patch and let him or her pick out his or her own pumpkin. Popeye loves doing this and has quite the knack for choosing pumpkins. Now, another thing that you can also do is to take your dog for a walk during the Halloween season, just in your neighborhood at night to kind of check out the decorations and see what the neighbors have put up. If you and your dog are the homebody type, that's okay too. You and your pup can curl up on the couch and have some popcorn and popcorn and have a scary movie marathon. You can also invite your dog's friends over and host a canine costume contest. This is great for socialization for your pup. Just make sure to only do this if your dog is friendly with other dogs. And you can give the winner of the canine costume contest a Halloween themed dog toy, which is pretty cute. If you give any of these ideas a try, reach out and let us know. We always love hearing from you. You can tag us on social media using hashtag Popeye's Pupkin Patch. We're gonna take a short break, but don't go anywhere. There's much more doggone fun when we come back. Thank Julie you. is a mobile yes. veterinary clinic on wheels. It's amazing. Yeah. You can't have a better profession where your patients can give you kisses. And they're really cute. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back to Canine Corner. I'm your host, Rhiannon Trutanich. While dressing your pet up for Halloween can be a lot of fun, it's important to keep him or her safe. So Jean Brusevich from Tranquil Pet is here to share some costume safety tips for dogs. So you know I love my costumes, and more importantly, you know that Popeye loves his costumes. Mm -hmm. Let's start with an old favorite Well, have we here. asked him? 
I think always, the look always, on his face when I took this box out of the house today it was like, proved to me that he okay. loves them. All right, I'm he just was checking. Not following me, but following the Your box, box of his clothes. Okay, okay. Okay. So even though Popeye does like to wear this for short durations, is this something, generally speaking, that is okay? If, is it breathable? Um, is it a toxic material? So you need to, so this is again, go back to what I said, reading labels, okay. Re label reading, label reading, label reading. Um, does it constrict his movements? Does he have problems in, in his movement? Does it cover his eyes? Does it cover his ears so he has trouble hearing or seeing something? And it's wearing a hat, or something. Make sure it's not covering his eyes. Make sure it's not covering his ears. We wanna make sure that he's able to hear and see. Because if you're out there and about, you know, in a parade or they have these different Halloween parade, pet parades or whatever, and there's other dogs there and maybe one dog gets away and starts running for him, he, he, you want to make sure that he's able to defend himself if he sees a dog coming at him. Right. Usually the dogs at these, you know, pet parades are, are social, right. but every once in a while a dog will look at another one and go, oh, I don't like you. Right. For w whatever reason. <laughs> so you want to make sure that it doesn't restrict movements, it's breathable. Uh, the material is pet safe. It's non-toxic. So okay. again, read labels, read labels. Okay. Read, read, read. So something like this where you don't want him focused on getting his hat off rather than being able to get away from another dog or, or, a, or a situation It also depends on, because um, I know Popeye is used to wearing things and he likes them. So if it's new for your dog, you should also try it on prior to the event right. and leave it on them and see how they react. If they're moving around, if they're not comfortable in it, right. if they're having, you know, maybe it's itchy to them depending on the materials. Right. Um, you know, maybe, again, read the labels because maybe there's something in it that might be toxic. Okay. If it's hot, this is only going to add to, you know, it's going to be like a blanket right. depending on, you know, the the texture of it this was a custom outfit for Popeye well, and I, I could, wish I was joking uh, but you know I could tell right now that with this metallic material I don't think this is breathable really and this looks like it this might be because I see lined. the holes in it the lining looks like it is but I don't know if this is or not okay again, read 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 but is maybe having something too that's open on the bottom or with his least fabric because like compared to let me grab another one something like this has has legs in it so that might be more restrictive than that would be definitely more so you restrictive. really need to when you're looking at these is to hit all of the marks so yes. it's not just having the breathable material it's having the breathable material that's also non-restrictive right it's there's, not one there's or the a, other there's a number of things okay breathable non-restrictive doesn't um uh block their eyesight or their okay. hearing or even you know they have again if there's other dogs that might be coming at them you want to make sure that they can protect themselves nothing's covering their mouths right. because they're also panting and breathing through their mouth right. so you want to make sure that that's open when you put something on your dog uh -huh. and and maybe you maybe you think that it meets all those requirements or maybe it does and your dog just doesn't take well to it what are the signs that you should look out for well, to I see think that would be like, like little warning well, if, signs. If they give you a look, okay. You know, and, and and you know your dog well enough that you know when they're happy, when they're sad, when they're mad. Right. You know those kind of things. I also think that if they're trying to pull it off, right. If they're moving around, um, again, you know your dog better than anybody, so yeah. you should be aware of when they're not comfortable definitely. in something. Oh, definitely. And you know, the one thing that you can do is, it's the safest, I think, is the mm -hmm. safest thing is to get like the cotton bandanas, the different holiday bandanas that just tie those around their neck. Those are like unobtrusive and they have, you know. Festive colors. Festive colors. Okay. Those to me are the safest things to use. Okay. I like to say, let your dog go in his birthday suit <laughs> and then put the bandana around the neck. And you know, they're even making now festive collars. Yes. So even getting like a cute, like Halloween print right. or something right. like that would be would be really cute too. And, and would Absolutely. let your dog be festive without right. putting him or her in danger. Right, Absolutely. Okay. If you are interested in contacting Jean or Tranquil Pet, Canine Aquatics and Holistic Healing Center, please visit tranquilpet.com. Jean Brasovich is back now with Halloween safety tips to keep your pet safe during the spooky time of year. 
How can I keep my dog on his regular routine during Halloween? Remember that pets are very sensitive to change. So with all the kids running around the neighborhood, ringing your doorbell, these are, you know, these kind of things like that, they get a little crazy. So there's some of the things that you should try and do for any holiday is to try and keep them on a regular routine. Same thing with, you know, their feeding schedule, their walking, their exercise, playtime. Sometimes when dogs get, um, or, or even cats, when they get a little agitated, they get a little bit more thirsty. So make sure they have plenty of, you know, cool drinking water, um, especially Halloween night when kids are coming and going, ringing the bell, the front door is opening and closing. You don't want them, number one, escaping. Number two, they're going to be, especially, I know for my dog, he'd be, Jake would be barking all over the place. So arrange for a quiet time, maybe a, a room in the back of the house or one of the bedrooms where, you know, put the television or some music on, maybe turn on to Canine Corners and keep them in there, you know, so that they're away from all that busy activity. What can I do if my dog gets nervous during Halloween? A lot of people say work is uh, get them a thunder shirt. There's, there's something about the way that hugs them that makes them feel secure and less anxious. Um, some people are using um, sedatives. I, you know, check with your vet. Um, I have other alternative ways of helping you, you know, to calm your pet. So if you want to like contact me, I'm happy to like make some suggestions and talk to you about that. What Halloween food should I keep away from my dog? Trick or treat candies are a no-no, especially the chocolate, the dark chocolates especially. They're very lethal and, and dangerous to animals. They can cause symptoms like in, from chocolate poisoning. They can cause vomiting, diarrhea. There's some rapid breathing, um, increased heart, heart rate. Sometimes some animals, depending on their allergic reaction, can have seizures. So these are things you need to be careful of. Um, a lot of candies um, now are having these, the substitute called xylitol. That is extremely toxic to animals. So make sure you don't have anything, or just make sure they can't get near that candy. Let me just add that peanut butter, you know, use that as a treat. I use that as a treat for my dog as well. Please read the labels. Read, read, read the labels because a lot of peanut butters contain xylitol. And if you suspect that your animal, by the way they're reacting, is they're giving you any of those symptoms of chocolate or food candy poisoning, um, the first thing you should do is if you know what it is, you should keep that handy. You should contact your vet. There's also, if it's after hours, maybe the emergency vet. There's also two places you can call, which is the Pet Poison Helpline and the ASPCA Hotline. Um, they have trained toxicologists um, on the phone that can help you. Now there is a fee for this, so be prepared to pay the fee. Where should I put my pet on Halloween? Don't leave your dogs out in the yard, you know, on, on Halloween, uh, Halloween night, especially we have a lot of crazies out there that might, you know, try and pester and, you know, hurt, hurt the animals. Make sure the gates are locked. For cats, especially black cats, I recommend keeping the cats indoors five days before and five days after Halloween. Dogs are also about keeping them away from the front door. They're very territorial. That's usually why they bark at the door because the mailman comes, drops off your mail, and they're barking at him and he turns away and leaves. So they're training themselves that, oh, I barked at somebody at the front door and they left. So that's why with the children coming and going to get candy, they're gonna, that's why I keep that quiet space for them. What Halloween decoration should I keep my pet away from? Pumpkins, while pumpkin itself is, is good for animals, especially if they have upset tummies, the pumpkin rind itself, um, you know, if, you, if you're decorating a pumpkin, um, be careful that they don't get a chunk of that because that can get caught in their intestines and that can cause major surgical problems for you. Don't light them around the pets. The, the flames, of course, they can get burned by that. Um, wires and electrical cords. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you this. If your dog gets caught or your cat gets caught up in an electrical cord, uh, uh, live wires, and is screaming, you hear the, you smell rather, the fur burning, what is the first thing that you do? I don't know. Okay, we shut the breaker off. Do not try and untangle, because I know you're gonna be panicked. Do not try and untangle them from this mm -hmm. because you'll end up getting electrocuted yourself. Wow. And also, uh, don't use a metal 
broom or stick or something, make sure it's like wood because the metal will act as a conduit and then you'll end up, you know, if you're going to try and move the cords away. Um, so the first thing is you shut the breaker off to kill the power completely. What is Tranquil Pet Canine Aquatics and Holistic Healing Center? Tranquil Pet is a um, what I my canine aquatics and holistic healing center. I specialize in swimming elderly arthritic, overweight dogs, but I also teach dogs how to get over their fear of uh, the water, teach them to swim. I do swim dogs for just fun and fitness. I work with performance and service dogs. I also um, can go to people's homes to teach their dogs how to get out of their pools. A lot of people's dogs do not, if they fall into their pools, there's been so many drownings because they don't know where the stairs are to get out. Mm -hmm. So I do go to people's homes and teach them that. So I'm also certified in small animal massage where I can give your dog a massage or I can teach you. I do classes, I do workshops where people bring their dogs. I call it BYOD, bring your own dog to class and I teach you how to give your dog a relaxation massage. You're not going to break up scar tissue, you're not going to do deep muscle massage, but you're just going to learn to give your dog a relaxation massage. I'm also a Reiki, ma uh, Reiki master practitioner for animals and humans and I'm also certified with Pro Pet Hero for pet first aid and CPR for, for your animals. I am also uh, working with essential oils because I have had a lot of People ask me about um, offering essential oils to their dogs, but that's another topic. If you are interested in contacting Jean or Tranquil Pet, Canine Aquatics and Holistic Healing Center, please visit TranquilPet.com. If you have a question, contact us and we'll be sure to get you the right answer. Call us at 310-618-5762 or email us at caninecorner at torrentca.gov. If you want even more Canine Corner, or just want to say hello, or share a photo of your pup in his or her Halloween costume, we always love to hear from you. Be sure to like our Facebook page and follow me on Instagram and Twitter. That's all the time we have today. Thanks for joining us here on Canine Corner. We wish you and your pup a spooky and happy Halloween. I'm Rihanna Trutanich, and we'll see you next time.